Hello friends, how are you doing and I hope you really are all having a great and fun time and everything is going smooth and awesome. We are doing the chapter Plant Growth and Development, the CBSC questions on this chapter, right? So we will start with the first question, how does growth occur in plants? All these are one, mark one markers and will help you, you know, we have to be very short and precise for this, right? So how does growth occur in the plants? Growth occurs in plants by cell division and cell elongation. Okay. The growth occurs in plants by cell division and cell elongation and this is how the growth occur in plants. We move on to the next question, where are the cytokinins produced? Right, absolutely. The cytokinins, the cytokinins are produced in, the cytokinins are produced in the fruits, in the fruits and the seeds. So the cytokinins are produced in the fruits and the seeds and this is where the cytokinins are produced, right? We now move on to the next question. What is vernalization? The induction of chilling treatment to produce, to you know induce flowering is called as vernalization. Okay. The induction, the induction of chilling treatment the induction of chilling treatment to bring about the induction of chilling treatment to bring about flowering is called as vernalization, okay? The induction of chilling treatment to bring about flowering is called as vernalization, right? We move on to the next question, what is differentiation? What is differentiation? See whenever there is a meristematic cell, right, whenever there is a meristematic cell. What happens this meristematic cell you know will undergo division, undergoes differentiation, okay, to perform a specific function to perform a specific function, right? So the meristematic cell undergoes differentiation to perform 
a specific function and what we see here that the differentiation is the specialization okay the differentiation is the specialization of cells to perform a particular specific function to perform a particular specific function okay So, differentiation is a specialization of cells to perform a particular specific function and this is what we mean by differentiation. We move on to the next question, what are phytohormones? <coughs> what are phytohormones? Phytohormones, phytohormones, okay, are natural plant substances, are natural plant growth substances, okay. So, phytohormones are natural plant growth substances that are released okay that are released or secreted by the plant or secreted by the plant So, phytohormones are natural plant growth substances that are released or secreted by the plant and hence and hence they control the growth and they control the growth. and different functions of the plant and hence they control the growth and different functions of the plant. Thus these, thus these are important right, thus these are important growth regulators, growth regulators and modulators and modulators. Okay, thus these are important growth regulators and modulators and these are what are the phytohormones, right. Moving on to the next question, define the apical dominance, right, define the apical dominance. Okay seems to have got so a 
apical dominance apical dominance is being exhibited okay is being exhibited right apical dominance is being exhibited by the apical or terminal buds apical dominance is being exhibited by the apical or the terminal blood buds where they will control where they will control the growth or you can say you know suppress the growth of the or suppress the growth or suppress the growth of the lateral buds of the lateral buds right or suppress the growth of the lateral buds and the apical dominance is shown by oxen apical dominance <coughs> is shown by oxen okay this is the phytohormone which is showing the apical dominance right we now move on to the next question what is the sigmoid growth curve curve right what is the sigmoid growth curve the rate of growth exhibited the rate of growth exhibited which is actually growth versus time growth versus time okay when plotted on a graph when plotted on a graph okay when plotted on a graph is called okay takes an s shaped takes an s shaped and is called as sigmoid growth curve okay and is called as sigmoid growth curve okay this is called as the sigmoid growth curve so you know if say this is right somewhat like this this is the lag phase you know which where the growth rate is increasing very you know gradually and you know here the growth rate is increasing very very fast the log phase or the exponential phase and this is a phase you know where it becomes stationary the growth is not that much in this particular phase and this is the sigmoid growth curve we move on to the next question what mention any three functions of oxen okay mention any three functions of oxen functions of oxens 
The first function of auxin is that it promotes cell division, okay. It promotes cell division. Responsible, auxin is responsible, right. It is responsible right for cell elongation for cell elongation right it promotes cell division it is responsible for cell elongation right it induces apical dominance it induces apical dominance and also we will see that you know it is responsible, it is responsible right, it is responsible it is responsible for root initiation, it is responsible for root initiation. Okay, it is responsible for the root initiation, <coughs> right. We move on to the next session, sorry, the next question that is, what is photoperiod periodism? How do you categorize angiosperms on the basis of the flowering response? Okay, photo periodism. Now, photo period periodism is can be said, you know, it is a very important characteristic of angiosperm, the flowering plants. It is the amount of daylight, this is the amount of daylight okay this is the amount of daylight required required by the plants this is the amount of daylight required by the plants for flowering okay so this is the amount of daylight required by the plants for flowering and in this there are three categories, three categories of plants and what are these three categories. Number one is the long day plants, the long day plants will require you know a longer daylight, much more extended daylight for flowering. These will require longer daylight for flowering. Okay, these will require longer daylight for flowering, short day plants, short day plants. require shorter daylight for flowering, these will require okay, shorter daylight for flowering, shorter daylight for flowering. and day neutral plants, day neutral plants, you know here it does not depend on the daylight okay amount of light for flowering, this does not depend, this does not depend 
on daylight for flowering on daylight for flowering. So, this does not depend on the daylight for flowering and this is what is photoperiodism. We move on to the next question that is the last one name the gaseous plant hormone and mention its three different kinds of action on the plants right. So, the gaseous plant hormone is ethylene, is ethylene, right? The gaseous plant hormone is ethylene and its action on plants right its action on plants number 1 causes fruit maturation and ripening okay it causes the fruit maturation and ripening right the second one you know it is responsible for form for the formation of abscission zone in leaves it is responsible right it is responsible for the formation for the formation of abscission zone of abscission zone it is responsible for the formation of abscission zone in leaves and thirdly what we see thirdly we will see that this plant hormone ethylene this will cause <coughs> more number of female flowers ok this will cause the more number of the female flowers and hence you know basically you know ethylene is very very important for the fruit maturation and ripening where it plays a very major role. So friends with this we have come to the end of this question discussion of this chapter get back to this and revise and you know the time we meet again a very good bye from this side thank you.